these reactions are harmful. They may have worked in the past. They may have been a good temporary solution even, but now they're damaging. I don't like to argue, so I say nothing and fume for days. How do I set boundaries without sounding like a jerk? I hate the idea that I might accidentally offend somebody, so sometimes I'd just rather say nothing at all. Welcome to the Language Alchemy Podcast, and thank you for joining me today. This is your host, Alejandra Siroca, a transformative communication teacher and coach devoted to helping you have more peace and more harmony in all your relationships. It's been stressful, and I don't have to remind you why it's been so. I trust you are very capable of going through your own laundry list of stressful events and experiences during the last two years. And we're having a serious problem as a human family, especially in highly industrialized countries. And that problem is that we are reacting to stress in ways that are extremely harmful. I was just reading an article from The Atlantic called Why People Are Acting So Weird. In the article, Olga Kazan, the author, writes that the harmful behavior we're seeing is a reaction to stress. She gives several examples that include Will Smith's reaction at the Oscars, reactions of people at airports and on planes, and also reactions at home, drivers' reactions on streets, and even reactions patients are having in hospitals. All these reactions are hostile and harmful, so much so that airline staff has received more training on how to deal with reactive travelers. And hospitals in Missouri considered giving nurses panic buttons when patients reacted violently to them. You may have experienced yourself more instances of reactivity. You may have found yourself feeling more irritated, more impatient, or taken over by big feelings. Or maybe you've been the recipient of more intolerance, rudeness, incivility, or curt and sarcastic comments. When we feel stressed and react to stress, we communicate that reactivity in some of the following ways. We fight more, which is what we've seen so much of in these past two years all over the world. We've seen people be very uncivil with others, swear more, call people's names, be more combative on social media. And when we fight more, we use blaming language. For example, we say something like, you know I'm under stress and you're making me more upset. You're doing this on purpose. Or we communicate our reactivity using guilt-tripping language, such as, if you really cared about me, you wouldn't add to my stress. You wouldn't bring this nonsense to me. Or we use shaming language, such as, what, you think you're the only one having stress? Do you live in a bubble? Or we use defensive language. I yell because I'm under stress. You don't have the kind of boss, the kind of pressure, the kind of work, the kind of circumstances I do. Whenever we're fighting, we are reacting. Another thing we do when we react to stress is that we try to run away from it by denying that we are stressed out. We say something like, well, I can't really complain about it because I should be grateful for all I have. I hear this a lot from people who identify themselves as spiritual. Something else we do when we run away from our stress is that we minimize the experience of stress by saying something like, yeah, it's been a bit hard for me, but you know, others have it worse. Look at people in Ukraine. I used to react to stress by denying or minimizing it, and I wasn't even aware of it. I didn't know that I was trying to run away from my experience of stress. When we try to run away from our experiences, we are reacting. And some other times, we try to trick ourselves into believing that we don't have any stress. That stress is something that other people have, but not us. 
So when this happens, we behave in reactive ways that are harmful to us. For example, we get distracted with social media, video games, TV, or the news. Or we try to compensate by trying to do the opposite of the feeling of stress and give ourselves some immediate pleasure, like overeating, over drinking, and other kinds of excess behavior. Whenever we are reacting in these ways, what we are communicating is that we don't know how to be with stress. Now, remember, reaction doesn't mean doing it once, fighting once, blaming once, running away once, getting distracted once. Reaction is when you repeat your communication and behavior in quote-unquote response to an experience. And as I said before, these reactions are harmful. They may have worked in the past. They may have been a good temporary solution even, but now they're damaging. They're damaging because the outcome we get from these reactions is greater stress. Our stress is not only not relieved or diffused. No, it actually increases because we are now more disconnected from ourselves or from the other person who received our harmful expression. And now we have to exert more energy, more time, and more attention to repair the harm. And what's so fascinating about so many articles published recently that describe the harmful effect of reactivity is that the very source of this stress we're all feeling is the disconnection that the pandemic brought. We are social beings, and as a whole, we had to stop connecting to others in the way we used to. We stopped going to work. We stopped gathering in a place to have a dialogue, to brainstorm ideas, to learn from one another, to celebrate important events to mourn, to worship, kids, they stopped going to school. So we put a big pause on so many activities that brought us connection and closeness. The article I mentioned earlier says, and I'll add the link in the show notes of this article if you're interested, but that article says, and I quote, Sociologists think all of this isolation shifted the way we behave. Robert Sampson, a Harvard sociologist who studies social disorder, said, when we become untethered, we tend to prioritize our own private interests over those of others or the public. So being reactive and saying things that are harmful are a way to give priority to ourselves and not have the space to consider others. So what can we do about it? How can we use language skillfully when we feel stress? Because stress, stress is a human experience. It's impossible to expect that we'll never have stress in our lives. And if you're having that expectation of yourself, please know that you're perfectly human even when you have stress. From the perspective of language alchemy, we can use our language to respond to stress rather than to react to it. And I want to give you some transformative communication tools here. In fact, I'm going to give you two very important tools. The first one is that when you are feeling stress, instead of reacting in one of the ways or all of the ways that I just described, make space to acknowledge your experience of stress. And how do we acknowledge the stress? You will know that you're acknowledging your stress because the language of acknowledgement doesn't have judgment in it. So we're not judging the experience of stress 
as something wrong, or we're not describing it as smaller or bigger than it is. It just is. So you may simply say to yourself, right now, I'm noticing that I'm experiencing stress. And you can say this out loud several times. Right now, I'm noticing I'm experiencing stress. See what happens. It's useful to say things out loud because when you hear your own voice saying this, you are allowing the experience to be so in the space rather than just in your mind. Doing this will increase the connection with yourself and the more self-connected you are, the less likely you are to behave in self-destructive ways. I'm going to say this again because this is very important. The more self-connected you are, the less likely you are to behave in self-destructive ways. So now that the stress has space, you may feel inclined to take some beneficial action that can help you be with the stress. So you may be inclined to move your body. You may put some music on and dance. You may go for a walk in nature. You may walk around the city and notice the beauty around you. You may listen to uplifting music. You may do some yoga, some journal writing, or something that increases the connection with yourself. The more connected you are to yourself, the more capacity you have to direct your life's energy towards more of what you want to experience and redirect it or move it away from what you don't want to experience. So by connecting with yourself, you connect to your capacity. And by connecting to your capacity, you connect to your ability to take care of yourself, which then offers you the true possibility of relieving yourself from that experience of stress. Another transformative communication tool you can use when you notice you are stressed is to reach out to a trusted someone and let them know that you want to talk to them and be heard. I have this with my husband, my beloved Matthew. I also have this with several friends. One of them is my dear friend, Caroline. We may call each other and we just say to one another that we just want to be heard. And we tell the other person, I just want to tell you something that's in my heart without interruption. The more you're able to communicate this out loud in the presence of another person, the greater the sense of connection you will feel not only to yourself, but also to the other person. And the more connection you feel, the more you want to honor rather than harm your connection with others. Because remember, it's when we feel disconnected that we feel more entitled to prioritize our own personal needs, wants, and desires and interests rather than the others. But when you feel more connected, you will consider their needs and your needs as equal, their desires and your desires as equal, their values and your values as equal. And you will be more inclined to collaborate and to honor rather than harm your connection with them. As you notice this true sense of connection, your internal experience will naturally change. I can tell you that when I do this, when I ask Matthew or my friend Caroline or other friends to just listen to me without interruption, listen to my experience of stress, my experience of stress changes. And I can also tell you that when I hold space for others, my clients, my friends, my beloveds, and their stress, their internal experience is transformed. 
So as you are feeling stressed out, reach out to someone. You may say something like, I'm noticing I'm experiencing some stress and I'd love to be heard about it. Would you be willing to hear me for 10 minutes and just be there with me so that I can acknowledge this stress safely without judging myself about it? I would love for you to give these two transformative communication tools an honest try. Because even if you're not feeling it right now, you will feel stress again. And it's good to be prepared to respond to it rather than to react to it. And now let's recap what we talked about in this episode. We talked about how we tend to react when we feel stress. I shared with you many examples of the language of reactivity we tend to use when we feel stressed. And I offered you two transformative communication tools that you can use to explore responding to the experience of stress. As usual, let me know how it goes. I truly love hearing from you. And if you're interested in learning more ways to redirect your reactivity, then go to languagealchemy.com forward slash five steps and download the free guide with five steps to redirect your reactivity. When you download that free guide, you will also receive other tips in your inbox for a whole week. Once again, it's languagealchemy.com forward slash five steps. I will add the link in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening. And a special thanks to my client, Maria, for all she's done to redirect her reactivity when she experiences stress. Until next week, and as we say in Argentina, ciao, ciao. Original music by Gary Lapoe. You can find all links in the show notes at languagealchemy.com. <laughs>